Right now we have the insert logic that is to insert data to the database in the main activity class. So what this means is this code is going to be executed in the main thread. Now if you remember uh, we discussed about threads in one of our earlier lectures and we saw that it's important that the the time uh, the time intensive operations you know the the operations which take time should be run in a separate thread uh, more like a background thread because if you if you are going to run the insert and the updates in the main thread then that will slow down the app and will lead to bad user experience so to overcome that uh, problem android provides us with an async task class now an async task class allows you to create a background thread in which you can execute the database code as well as you know like code like when you are working with the web services and stuff like that so how to use it let me show you and what is an async task exactly so async task is a class which you need to overwrite so i've created a and the other thing is this async task class we are overriding in the main activity so we are basically creating a inner class in the main activity class so it looks something like this so you you define a class like survey db async task or any other name and you extend the async task you pass like three generic parameters here i'll go into the details of these parameters shortly then you need to override like three methods on pre execute do in background and on post execute now on pre execute method allows you to do the setup you know the the stuff that you can do on the main thread like defining the content value object okay do in background is the method that is that uh, the logic which is written here goes in the background thread basically so this is the stuff which is meant for another thread okay on post execute gets invoked once the, once the task is completed so it again runs on the main thread now if you see in the on pre execute we have return type as void and we have no parameters whereas in do in background we have a return type long you can change this to whatever return type you need uh, i have mentioned long here because when we do an insert then we get the database id i mean the table id for the row so that basically is is what i am returning here that is like db dot insert thing and if you see the params here so this this parameter is something which you can pass when you invoke the async task so if you for example need to pass some parameter on the basis of which you need to perform these operations then that can be specified here this is exactly what is mentioned there so string is the type of parameter you are passing here void is another method basically which tracks the progress which we are not using as of now you don't need it and long is the return type specified here okay so that's in a nutshell and this this the same return type is again passed as parameter in on, on post execute so you can access this id here and display it to the user or you know do uh, various stuff um, various operations so this is how the async task looks like and what i've done is um, earlier this code was you know it, it was available here like if you see earlier we had created uh, we had this on click view uh, sorry on click method where the insert logic was available and this has been moved to the async task and the way you invoke the async task is you simply create an object and call the execute method Okay, that's it and uh, the entire logic first we define the content values then we perform the db operation in a background thread and then we are back to the main thread so this is how the uh, this is how you can use async task uh, we'll probably look at the practical example in the next video for now go ahead and read about async task and you can refer to this code okay thanks